it's a new dawn it's a new day and we're back in satisfactory plus but this is gonna be a little bit different compared to what we've been doing within this series because as you can tell there's a lot of things that are very different and this video is a little bit overdue you're probably already noticing a lot of things have changed within this save, but don't worry, we're going to break it down. But hopefully you're all having a good morning, afternoon and evening. So what is the plan with the rest of this save? Well, this unfortunately is going to be the last video I'll be doing on Satisfactory Plus until after Satisfactory 1.0. And the reason being is I don't want to spoil this mod too much for myself. Yes, it's unfinished. There is a lot of new things, but I don't want to go too, too far or too deep into this mod to then ruin it for myself for when we do play a full playthrough after the 1.0 completion. So this past couple of weeks, I've been taking a break from Satisfaction and I am going to be doing so until the release of 1.0. And when September 10th approaches, you best to believe there's going to be Twitch streams new enough every single day of me playing it. There will also be videos coming out on the new schedule. And if you don't know about the new schedule or the new channel changes or what is going on after two years of me sciencing different content on this channel, because we now we have a clear path. And I highly recommend checking out this video right here. I'll put a tag, I'll put a link in the description. I'll put it in the pinned comment, but it's also the previous video before this one. And this explains everything in regards to what happened or what is happening with the future of this channel, the future of the live stream, the more bits channel and the VODs channel. So I won't go over it too much in this video, but make sure you go and check out that video if you are interested in when videos will be scheduled to release. So the last thing you guys saw me working on was this little storage unit. This was about four weeks ago now. And the purpose for this was just for me to grab items for general building purposes. And, and it's bringing in all the items from here, this building, where it's bringing me in the tin, the zinc, the copper, the iron, and all that kind of good stuff. Yes, everything looks very, very bland right now. It doesn't look like my kind of building style. That is because we're not doing any form of decoration. I say that, but I did do a building where I thought, you know what, let's just see what we can do and just play around with some stuff. And I'll talk about that later on you might have seen it at the start of this video but the first thing i wanted to do after i built this was start looking into the next project which would have been cryolite so we're going to bring out the mam here and then we're going to go into here i'm going to look into cryolite and cryolite is basically quartz in this uh, this mod so we needed cryolites and start working down this section and then after extending the foundation out and then building a bridge sort of over to the north side of the actual desert i then set up this little area just for me to start mining the cryolite from the quartz nodes that are generally in this location and then the next step was to start unlocking it in the mam with the just adding the cryolite into here to unlock quartz crystals salt and crushed stone and as you can tell i've not unlocked the lime dust as of yet the next thing i did was bring all that cryolite over to the area i added over here which then it goes into this sorter this sorter then takes 120 cryolite per minute which produces quartz crystal salt and crushed stone which was from this unlock right here this then just comes on the output side and goes into these storage containers which are the resourcing containers uh, and this is just for pure collection only. This is not being automated, just so I can start working th towards the next unlocks, which as right now, you can see we have the items. So we're gonna start that research, get it done and see what's next, which then means we unlock the Explorer potentially, and then also the Salty Ingots. The next thing I needed to do was head over to the bronze setup because I needed lead frames and I needed bronze frames. And that's why I needed to extend this platform and add these few machines on the end here. Because I needed to bring up the additional styrotite and then fix the problem where I wasn't bringing enough rubite into these sorters over here. So I started doing like we normally done, been putting the smelters down, which then goes into constructors. And everything you can see on the screen now is basically just to make screws. So I had two smelters going into four constructors and then four constructors going into three constructors to make screws. And then these screws only went into the assemblers, which got mixed with some bronze products. First up was to make the bronze frame from bronze beams and screws. And then the next one was to bring in the lead plates and screws to make lead frames. These then come along the belts to their designated storage units. 
And the reason we needed that is to unlock smart plating, which was part of one of the milestones in tier two. So once unlocking that, we then can add the smart plating to our setups so we can start pushing towards tier three and tier four. I then proceeded to start looking into the smelting module just because I just wanted to see what it does, what it can do, and what the benefits are. And then after fighting some hogs, removing the stereotype ore, then placing a miner, and then adding the metal miner, I can then look into the smelting module. So and what this does, this goes back on, on the back side of your miner, and it actually adds basically a smelter as it would describe it to be. Uh, but this time it has a liquid output. So now it actually smelts the ore in the miner. So it mines it, it then smelts it within here, but it gives off a byproduct of slag. Well, molten slag. And molten slag has its purposes, but I'll talk to you about that later on. And then I added two assemblers just outside where my storage place was uh, to make smart plating. Then added a belt on the outside just to get on the input side of the actual space elevator. Inserted all the items I needed so I can load, seal it and send it. Now we can unlock tier 3 and 4. Well, we have just unlocked tier 3 and 4. And then going into the actual hub itself, this opened my eyes to how crazy this mod was. Because now we start looking into molten metals. Molten bronze, copper, caterium, iron, zinc, tin, magnesium, lead, a flexible blast furnace. This, bla uh, this blast furnace uses high temperature to produce molten metal, as well as mix molten metals and other ingredients. Molten metals must be cooled in a solidifier to produce ingots. And warning, it's extremely hot. Then we can unlock steel. So we can see we have an air collector now. And what this does is basically grabs oxygen and puts it into a pipe for us. We then get the scanner upgrade for coal, molten steel, steel ingots, steel beams, steel screws, steel pipes and steel rods. We can then look into metal casting. So we can start looking at the solidifier, which goes in hand in hand with the molten metals. And then we also unlock water, which is... It's just water. Then the bronze ingots, copper ingots, caterium ingots, zinc, tin, lead, and iron. So we can then start solidifying the molten metals from its liquid form into actually solids, which more than likely will give us better yields. And then we can look into brass, molten brass, brass ingots, brass pipes, brass plates, then trucks, then bashers. Then we can look at advanced logistics, which require conveyor belts and also conveyor belt mark three and conveyor lifts mark three. But yeah, just to take into consideration, Conveyor Belt Mark III needs this conveyor belt to actually build. Very similar to the simple conveyor belt in the building parts. So we need to build these if we want to build the Mark II belts. But we'll get around to this one later on and I'll let you know what recipes it does require. Then we can also look into uh, hydroelectric power, which means we can put water turbines uh, down on these little whirlpools in water sources. But then we also unlock the rotor blades and then scanner upgrade for water turbine nodes, which is what I've just shown you a second ago. And then if we head over to teal three, we can actually see coal power and an additional blueprint designer mark three, which is a big size of 64 meters, 64 by 64. Then, like I said, we have the coal power, which only gives us the coal heater. And if you put two by two together now, you know that this will just replace the biomass heaters, which is what we have here, taking in all the solid biomass to heat the water to produce steam for power. Power. So it's just a matter of replacing the biomass ones for coal one to give us a more yield because we can bring in more coal, which means we can produce more hot water, which means we can produce more steam, which means more power. And then we have the 100 inventory slots over here, which is part of the inventory mod, which I have uh, because I do want more inventory because the amount of items you get in this game is absolutely nuts. Then we've got advanced parts, which give us heavy modular frames, mortars encased industrial beams. Then we've got hyper, which is obviously they are hypertubes, industrial storage, and mining modules, which gives us steel mining heads, which basically allows us to upgrade our miners basically to tier two miners, which means more yield and allows us to double our production. We also then get the industrial storage containers with the awesome sink storage Mark IIs. Then we also unlock the pipeline engineering Mark II milestone, which gives us Mark II pipes, pumps, and valves. And then we also have the Fixit Inc. assembly project Mark II, which is basically versatile framework, automated wiring, so we can start working on project assembly parts. And then, surprisingly enough, the hover pack, which is in tier four, which surprised me when I unlocked this, because I was expecting this to maybe later on, 
but the mod actually brings it down a few tiers. But I still prefer the jetpack over the hover pack. So fight me about it if you want. <laughs> Next up, we also have the alternate power and storage, which brings in solar panels, power storage, staters, simple photovoltaic cells, quartz crystals, silica, carbon mesh, wind turbines Mark II, power towers, and power tower platform, but also the scanner for the upgrade cryolite if you've not worked on it in the MAM yet. So after unlocking the molten stuff and the solidifiers and all this kind of stuff, I needed a playground to play and science with it. So I thought, why not let's grab all the ore from the desert and take it to the southern part of it? So that's what I went and did. I collected all the styrotite on this spider's web of a contraption here. And then after powered, it'll all come onto this arterial bus line right here, which makes its way across the bridge to the gates of doom. <laughs> and at the time of me building this, the sole purpose was for me to start looking into all the liquid metals. This is where I come across my first hurdle because I wanted to make sure I can expand onto the current build. So I wanted to build things on different floors. So when we unlock different belts, we can expand and double our production. And as of right now, we're only using the Mark II belts. So then I started the basic production. I put down the two crushers going into the sorter. And then I was curious about the numbers of the Mark III belt. Are they still going to be 270 or are they going to be different? So heading over to the hub, I then went into here, looked at advanced logistics and tried to find out what my answer was. And that answer was 270. So we already know that we need to potentially look at overclocking. Because from our previous episodes, we already know that the sorter, the crusher and all that kind of good stuff are giving us out even numbers. And then trying to underclock and overclock is not possible yet. So then I put a mam down, I went over to it and looked at power slugs because I wanted to come into here to unlock over and underclocking, but lo and behold, it's a little different. So if we click on this, we actually now need slug DNA yellow and we also need the blue or purple. And after going out trying to find some slugs and trying not to die from the gas, I was then able to unlock a plethora of the unknown slug hatching, slug hatchery, incubator module, temperature module, humidity module, and overclocking, which is the answer I only wanted. But then looking further down, we can see breeding, slug terrarium, then low slime processing with low energy modules, low energized slug slime, low energized slug slime, and another low energy slug slime. I knew for a fact when I was digging into this, this was a whole new thing. This was a part of the fix it farming. And from what it looks like, I'm gonna become Captain Jack Sparrow and try and find some jars of dirt. But as I was doing all of this, I was getting tired and tired of handcrafting simple conveyor belts. So just in front of where I was doing the uh, cryolite, I put down this simple little section here with a storage for the reinforced plates and a storage for the, uh, what they called again, tin sheets, which then go into the assembler to make them for me. So yes, I do need to put these in manually, but over time, this will, when I fill these up, will give me a basically a sugar ton loads of conveyor belts eventually. So I don't have to keep handcrafting them because it was getting, it was annoying me and it was also annoying the Twitch viewers when I was building them because none of us like to handcraft and this mod makes us handcraft more than we like. So a few hours later went by and I was like, I'm interested in how this farming works, but I looked into it and now I regret it because I put a miner down on a dirt pile down here, which was giving me joys of dirt. The, the jars of dirt was then heading to this monstrosity of a building, which is the seed extractor. And yes, there is wheat, corn, potatoes, and carrots. And then the UI looks really, really nice in here. So we can see the jar of dirt going in and it gives us some wheat seeds, some corn seeds, potato seeds, carrot seeds, all at 30 per minute. And they all come out on these little trays right here with the corresponding label on the side of them. So we can see wheats, carrots, well, potato carrot <laughs> that then goes into this thing which is a farming well a, a, not a, a farming platform then we have to put down these individual crop plots and then we have to add these little extensions on top which allows us to harvest it automatically where at first you start doing it yourself so in this building we can see everything that's going on so we can see the the individual seeds coming in and then we can also see some other items. We can see apples, we can see aubergines, we can see bananas. And then this was giving me the raw products. This including biomass capsules and also wheat and potatoes, corn and carrots. 
they all come out of the form via the uh, solid input and you can uh, so, sorry the solid output which you can see there's also multiple liquids going in which i would guess would be for fertilizer actually i know because it says it down there <laughs> i've just seen it now but also water all the items do come out one solid uh, output which does mean if you want to organize this we're going to need some smart splitters to split this up into the directions where it needs to go i then just get this going into here and you can see we've got a small little abundance of the products it's making then that was my little science experiment done with until i realized what do we do with all of this well looking in the fix it farming tab you can see we have greenhouse modules irrigation modules the platforms the crop plot cooking hubs seed extractors and then i went into special where you can see slug hatchery incubator module temperature module humidity module and a slug terrarium and after placing one of these down you must be wondering what these are well this beautiful looking building which gg to the development team for making these awesome uh, modules we can actually go into here and this is where we put slugs and you can see slugs require food and food is specific for certain slugs and i only found out that this mod gives you around 16 or maybe 26 someone correct me if i'm wrong in the comments by there's many many variants of slugs never mind i've gone into the dictionary here and seen well the, the in-game wiki and you can see there's multiple different slugs we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13 14 15 with the purple one up there as well and 16 for the blue one so there is 16 different types of slugs but if you've noticed these are all unknown and that is because we need to science in game we do not get the answer how to make these we literally need to play around with our laboratories and make a science building and start basically putting different items into the incubators for different results oh, and breathe but that is a little insight into fix it farming so back over at the molten plant we can see things are being up and running but on the second floor this is where we look into the blast furnaces so these first three right here require crushed iron which output 30 molten iron and third uh, 10 molten slag the slag makes its way combining with the other ones just to a dead end of a pipe where the molten iron then heads over to three more blast furnaces where the recipe inside here requires 30 molten iron so it's a one-to-one -one ratio from one blast furnace to another it also requires 40 coal and 15 ur which will then output 30 molten steel and also 10 molten slag as well so i got the molten slag underneath the ground to combine it with the other molten slag from the first original four well three blast furnaces and the molten steel makes its way up this conveyor belt well pipe right here to go to the next floor so in regards to coal i referred to the coast here on the west side of the desert which as we know there's two coal plots there and we've got two coal plots on the far end as well and then underneath i've got plenty of room for any water extraction then i come across my first problem which was the inputs of the items for the molten steel coal we are fine because as i've just shown you we can bring it from the west coast but the ur is now the problem so i was like okay we have the ur extractor so we look at the ur collector in the production menu and it says collects ur from the environment the higher it is the more ur the ur collector can collect the higher the elevation the faster it can collect ur collection speed will be reduced if ur collectors are nearby this range can be viewed with the r default key in, in build mode if placed near a gas pillar it will collect toxic ur stats but you might have noticed something a little different because we are missing brass pipes so to make brass pipes we need brass ingots and we also need iron wire in the assembler to make the brass pipes but to make the brass ingots we need to put it in a solidifier and cooler which is going to need molten brass it also needs water which then makes the products which is going to break steam and all this kind of stuff it's a whole plethora of machines along mother machines and this is when my brain started going blah, 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 blah. So the first problem I wanted to work on was just bringing in the coal, which we knew where to grab. Then I worked on a bronze facility. And lo and behold, I just needed the items that was down here on the beach after all. So the first thing I did was I started extracting the sapphirite, which then goes into the sorter. The sorter then does its normal job by crushing it into crushed sapphirite and giving me crushed stone as a byproduct. 
The crushed sapphorite then comes into another sorter where it then makes crushed copper, crushed zinc and crushed stone. The crushed copper comes around here, goes into this malt, well, this blast furnace, which then makes molten copper and molten slag. Then we have two pipes here. The brown is molten slag, just so you can visually understand what each pipe is, which then goes into some fluid buffers, just so it can build over time. I'm not worried about any keeping this running 100% all the time. We are just sciencing some things in regard to this save. Then we have the orange pipe, which is copper, which then goes into this blast furnace, which comes in with this greeny turquoisey color here, which this is molten zinc. So the zinc and copper that's coming out of that source, it goes into these two blast furnaces. The copper goes into molten copper. The zinc goes into um, molten copper. The uh, slag then merges with the output of the slag from this blast furnace, which then goes into the storage. Then on this, we also need, on the input, we need crushed iron. So I had to bring in a styrotite ore, which then goes into the sorter, which makes its usual products. So after getting the crushed iron in here, the molten zinc and molten copper, we are then making molten brass and molten slag. And then, as you guessed it, the molten slag comes back around and merges with the other slag to go into the storage. And yes, I do understand that every so often I will have to empty this to keep this whole thing flowing. Then this blast furnace outputs the molten brass into the building called the solidifier, which looks a little bit like this, which is super cool. Uh, and inside of it, we can see it requires molten brass and water to make 120 brass ingots and 15 steam. The steam then comes out into this, which is the steam cooling tower, which you've seen us build in the power plant, well, the steam power plant. Uh, and then the um, brass then comes out of here, goes along this belt and goes into the assemblers and constructor over here. The constructor makes the brass plates and the assembler makes, as you guessed it, the brass pipes, which then go into storage. So then I can build the uh, extractor. But also in this location, I also needed to make iron wire, which is what these are doing over here. So I've got some constructors just making iron wire from the styrotite and the crushed iron products that we made earlier. Then after bringing the coal up into the blast furnaces that are going to be making the molten steel, on the side of the building, I added the ur extractor, which you can see is this tower building right here. And then I colored this pipe in like a light bluey, kind of silvery kind of color which then goes into here and then on the top floor the molten steel which is coming from into here is then going up up here into this section which is more solidifiers the solidifiers which require 30 molten steel per minute 10 water per minute make 120 steel ingots and steam per minute and as you guessed it the steam goes into the tower to get released into the atmosphere and the steel ingots get put into constructors uh, constructors to make the steel beams, steel pipes, and steel screws, which then go into these three um, awesome sink storage marks ones. So now we have basic steel set up. And now breed bits. Jeez, I think I need to hydrate. Everybody hydrate, because I am about to do it right now. So after building our first little setup of the steel plant, it occurred to me that we needed more power if I wanted to carry on expanding this. And with all the styrotite that we have coming into here, that was my intention. But you can also see that I upgraded the conveyor belts to Mark 3s, which means I could then start looking at getting the miners to give me 270 ore per minute. So after going to every single miner, removing the mining head, and then going into the build mode, and then getting a steel mining head, and adding that instead, we then increased our throughput to every single miner. And that took some time. So now our styrotar arterial bus line is moving and bloody grooving. This is where we then look into this building, which, yes, this is where we did a little bit of a design, but nowhere near finished and unfortunately will not get finished. And what this building is, is to solve my power problems issues with the building that we are doing in regards to molten. Uh, so what this is, is exactly the same setup we are doing with the biomass steam uh, and all that kind of stuff. It's just that this time we are utilizing the coal heaters. So we are bringing in the coal, which is from outside of the desert here. So we have these coal and then we also have the two pure from that direction also. These all come in, in I think, I believe a total of five lines, uh, four lines, which then come into this building where we then basically do the whole same system setup just a lot more so we can see the water being boiled by the coal heater below which then goes into the 
turbines, which then goes into the generators, which then goes into power and all that kind of good stuff. The only thing about this is three floors high. So every single floor is a duplication of each other. The only difference is, is this bottom floor, I did a little bit more decoration than I did the other floors. But also for me to get this up and running to give me that additional power, I looked into the turbines. So if we look down here, we can actually see there is many, many turbines down here at this waterfall. And funny enough, wherever you place the turbines will actually help in a better yield. So if you place them on a river, you will not get a, a really good throughput. But if you put them on like for the edge of massive waterfalls, for example, you're getting 50 megawatts per each one. And if I'm not mistaken, I have over 26 in this location. Then I have all the water turbines on the back end of the building here, which go up to the side of the building, which then goes into all the coal heaters to provide all the steam I need and uh, all that good stuff. And then we kind of created this little design on the outside of the building using signs and just using curves and making circles. And it, it kind of, you know, it kind of gives it a vibe of like, yeah, this could be like a little power building. It could be like a little Tesla coil kind of thing. But obviously I never got around to finish the whole design of the building. And then this takes us to today, the ending of the Satisfactory Plus mini series. Um, it is a very bare bones. We looked into basically some of the logistics stuff and I only think we only scratched about 20% of the surface. We have many more phases. We have 1.0 around the corner, which is only going to bring in more tiers for this mod. So it wouldn't surprise me by the end of this uh, mod development, it wouldn't surprise me if there's going to be many more tiers past tier 10. So if you're interested in this mod, make sure you check it out. The devs are fantastic who have been working on this. Um, the assets they've been implementing, really nice. The complexity is a breath of fresh air. And I just want to thank you all for this mini series and hopefully you all enjoy, uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I wish I could continue it more, but 1.0 is around the corner and I need to take a little break from Satisfactory before the chaos uh, takes over. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep smiling and make sure you check out the other video in regards to the schedule. I don't know what just happened with my camera, but now we're looking at sand. Anyway, have a top down view. But much love and again, keep smiling and I'll see you in another video.